I'm John Bowden, and it's the top 10 songs from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. According to members of Facebook's ELP Appreciation Group and Rock History Music's Facebook group. For this one, we wanted fans who had all the albums, the real fans, the people who knew more than C'est La Vie, Lucky Man, or Carnival 9. If you only knew those three songs, you couldn't vote. And thanks so much to everyone who contributed, especially in the shadow of Keith Emerson's death. Number 10, released July 6, 1972. It was a true story of Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, how they could arrange other people's work and do it well. They certainly wrote a lot of tunes, but they interpreted a lot of classical composers' inspirations. Case in point, Aaron Copland. The group had two of his compositions in our larger group of top 25 songs. So we start with Hoedown, originally a fiddle tune from Copland's 1942 ballet, Rodeo. Like ELP, the classical composer got his inspiration from a piece from William Stepp's Bonaparte's Retreat. There's a lot of Keith Emerson in this one. After he played a Romanian festival, he leaned on their influence a little bit on this tune. And it's a lively little ditty. Number nine, released November 19th, 1973, arguably their best album, Brain Salad Surgery. The beautiful song Jerusalem opens the project and it's another interpretation. I remember my ex-wife's late father. He used to sing it in church in Manchester, England as a boy. And a choir performed it at Prince William and Kate Middleton's wedding. It's Hubert Perry's hymn built around a poem by William Blake that started that legend of Jesus possibly coming to England to further his studies. We're up to number eight, released November 1970, the very first song from the very first Emerson, Lake and Palmer album. It's the Bartok inspired The Barbarian, named after Bartok's Allegro Barbaro. It really was a solid introduction to the band reinventing classical pieces. This is something they sometimes got flack over in the beginning. Eventually, prog rockers accepted that this was their bag and they were very good at it. We should know that The Barbarian was also the most voted tune on our survey. Out of the 100 ELP experts who voted, 70% included this song on their top 10. Number seven, released March 17th, 1977, Works Volume One. Contrary to public belief, Keith Emerson, Greg Lake, and his old King Crimson pal, Pete Sinfield did not dress up as pirates for inspiration and go to Disneyland for this one. Sinfield says the idea for pirates came from watching Errol Flynn pirate movies. He told the record collector, the idea for pirates is an allegory for a rock band on tour. When I read up on the subject, it soon became obvious that pirates weren't romantic at all. Emerson's music was very Gilbert and Sullivan, and it was extraordinarily difficult to get that true nature of piracy into it. Number six, released November 1970. Greg Lake's Take a Pebble incorporates a few different styles, but it's folk right off the top. But then they jam. The good thing is Emerson just flies on this tune, strumming and picking the piano strings. At 12 minutes plus, it's a journey with glimpses of Emerson's jazz leanings from the days of the nice. And here's the thing, anyone who's ever experienced this song live will never let anyone trash talk Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Number five, released July 6, 1972, Trilogy. It's another Greg Lake song. Listen, we know they weren't a top 40 band, but believe it or not, this one squeaked in at number 39 on the Billboard charts, being their only top 40 hit. As we remember Keith Emerson, take a second listen to this tasty, subtle solo. It's passed around the halfway mark of this song. Nothing grand, he knew what to do with every song. From the beginning was also the name of their 2007 box set. Number four, released July 6, 1972 from Trilogy. Greg Lake says we used to retrofit our album titles. Certainly the album concepts were retrofitted. We made the music first and we fit everything together just because it was the order that it was written in. The word Trilogy actually never occurs on the whole album. Lake wrote the title song with Emerson but the keyboards on this one shows how there would be no ELP without him on many of their pieces, but especially this one. It's courageous, it's catchy, and it's one of those songs you want to play to someone when you really want to represent this band. Number three, released November 1970 from the debut album. Well, fans of mainstream classic rock certainly know Lucky Man. Lake says he wrote the song when he was 12, calling it a medieval fantasy. He says, what motivated me really was my mom just bought me a guitar. 
I'd learned a few chords, and back then these were easy chords. I just wrote this little song, but I never even wrote it down on paper. I just made it up in my head, and it was there. But for some reason, I never forgot the lyrics. It was many years later when it got recorded on an ELP record. And guess what? He never changed the words. A 12-year-old boy wrote one of Emerson, Lake & Palmer's biggest tunes. Number 2, released June 4th, 1971, Tarkas. This song came so close to being number one, there was like three, four points in between this one and number one. This seven-layered masterpiece is so incredibly moving. We all hear about songs that change you, movements that expand the way you think about music. This is one of those tunes. It's 20 minutes by the name Tarkas, referred to that armadillo tank, of course, on the cover, done by William Neal. He says it's an amalgamation of Tatarus, a place of punishment in Peter II, and a carcass. Emerson once said he was most proud of the piano concerto in Works Volume 1 and Tarkas, adding that the tune took on a life of its own. It was also their only number one album in the UK. And we're at number one, released November 19th, 1973 from brain salad surgery. Again, I think it's important to point out that number one and number two were so close, within a few votes of each other. But interestingly, the diehard fans, remember the people who voted for this, the 100 different people who voted for these songs, were true Emerson, Lake and Palmer fans, not Fairweather fans. And they interestingly voted for something that the general public knew as well, Carnival Night. It's three movements in 30 minutes. Gordon Fletcher of Rolling Stone magazine said, the real meat of this platter is Carnival 9. It's another tour de force where ELP pull out all the stops. This time around the themes of a tripart epic between man and his surroundings. And no band has a signature line like, welcome back my friends to the show that never ends. The album's title came from a line in the 1973 Dr. John hit, Right Place, Wrong Time. In 2014, readers of Rhythm Magazine voted it the 10th greatest drumming album in the history of progressive rock. To be fair to all those great Emerson, Lake and Palmer fans who voted, it's impossible to really bring it down to 10 songs with such an incredibly prolific band. When we combined all the voting, we decided to see which album actually came out best when we added up all the tabulations from particular songs. And Trilogy, their third album, came out number one, followed by Brain Salad Surgery, Tarkus, Works Volume 1, Pictures at an Exhibition, Works Volume 2, and the last, Love Beach. And a few great Emerson, Lake and Palmer fans went out of their way to ask me to remind everyone that Keith Emerson, when the dust settled, just wanted to be known as a composer. May he rest in peace. Make sure you comment on our videos and subscribe to our channel. We'll also check out your videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Book.